Football Fantasy. Hello and welcome to Keepers, the internet's best fantasy football advice show, according to my mom. I'm Matt Ufford and I got one beautiful week out of Mike James. Farewell, sweet prince. We'll always have that Seattle game. Start Riley Cooper. He's become an absolute fantasy stud with Nick Foles under center, especially the last two weeks, catching five of Foles' 10 touchdowns over that span. This week he gets the Redskins defense, which has given up the third most fantasy points to wide receivers. Yes, please. Sit CJ Spiller and Fred Jackson. Usually the question is, which Buffalo running back will disappoint me this week? But the Jets provide an easy answer. Sit them both. New York is best in the NFL against the run in both yards per attempt and yards per game, and they're coming off an extra week of rest and preparation. Start Ben Tate. With Arian Foster out for the season, the long years of having Tate as a handcuff have finally paid off. Tate has seven games to up his value before his contract ends, so expect him to run hard despite the injured ribs. Sit Colin Kaepernick. Over his last three games, he's averaged barely 150 passing yards with just one touchdown. Throw in Vernon Davis's concussion and the Saints defense that gives up the third fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks, and I don't like his chances in the Superdome. Hey Harbaugh, bring back the read option. Start Mike Wallace. He's been inconsistent this year, but Ryan Tannehill should have opportunities to find Wallace downfield against a Charger pass defense that surrenders the highest passer rating and yards per attempt of any team in the league. And the Chargers cross-country trip to South Florida doesn't bode well for a team that, in five road games, has allowed opponents' top receivers to rack up 700 yards. Boosh! That's analysis. Sit Steven Ridley. Shane Vereen could return this week to take away some touches, but even if he doesn't, it's best to not start backs playing against Carolina right now. During the Panthers' five-game winning streak, they haven't given up a single touchdown on the ground and have mostly bottled up the likes of Adrian Peterson, Zach Stacy, Mike James, RIP, Steven Jackson, and Frank Gore. Last week, I told you to sit Arian Foster and Jermaine Gresham, who were so devastated by my predictions that they were later declared inactive for their games. Okay, injuries may have also played a factor, but let's not downplay my contribution. Keepers! the fantasy show where I tell you not to start guys who aren't playing. You're welcome. Buy low on Cecil Shorts. He managed just two catches for 42 yards against Alteron Werner and the Titans, but he's gotten at least 10 targets in every other game this season. And with Justin Blackman suspended for the year, look for Shorts to return to the early season form that saw him get 84 yards per game during Blackman's first suspension. Sell on Ray Rice if you've got an optimistic Ravens fan in your league. With his nagging hip injury and Baltimore's shoddy run blocking, Rice doesn't have a single game topping three and a half yards per carry this year. He also hasn't hit pay dirt since week five, and John Harbaugh has hinted that Bernard Pierce will be taking more of his playing time. Buy low on Eli Manning. After throwing 15 interceptions in his first six games, Manning seems to have gotten it together with just one pick in his last three. All Giants wins, by the way. With the return of Andre Brown and a healthy run game, Manning will have more time to pick apart the other terrible defenses in the NFC East. Sell high on Tavon Austin. Austin exploded for three huge touchdowns in Indianapolis. Don't go chasing that box score. Austin only played 15 offensive snaps against the Colts, and the fact that he got more touchdowns than catches isn't exactly a sustainable model for success. There's a good chance of rain in Carolina on Monday night, and with wetness comes ball security issues. The Panthers and Patriots have both been plagued by drops this season, so don't be surprised when the ball goes right through Ted Ginn's hands. I mean, with Ted Ginn, it's more of a surprise when he actually catches a ball. He really should have been a cornerback. Hire Bobby Rainey and fire Bryce Brown. It looks like Rainey will be the next man up after another season-ending injury in the Bucks' backfield. Rainey made the case for a start with 56 total yards and a TD in the final three quarters, while also having the advantage of not being Brian Leonard. Bryce Brown, meanwhile, hasn't done enough with his five carries per game to merit any more touches in Chip Kelly's offense. Drop him. Hire Michael Crabtree and fire Greg Jennings. Crabtree could make a season debut as soon as this week, and in case the long layoff made you forget, he was good for 85 yards and almost a touchdown per game in his last 12 games, including playoffs. He's certainly more worthy of a roster spot than Jennings, who's averaging 32 yards per game without a score in the last five weeks. Hire Rashard Matthews and fire Randall Cobb. Oh, poor Randall Cobb. He's not even eligible to return until week 15. Even if he does make it back for that one, it's no guarantee that Aaron Rodgers will be his quarterback. 
you should only hold on to him if you're in a keeper league or one with an IR spot. As for Matthews, he came out of nowhere to catch 11 passes for 120 yards and two scores on national TV. That's gonna make him a hot pickup in all larger leagues. Even if his production falls off from his breakout game, his rapport with Tannehill should make him a reliable play in deeper leagues. That is all for week 11 of Keepers, your outdoor activity of the week. Take a trip to somewhere exotic, or just put on a tropical shirt, go for a walk, and think about all the money you're saving. Nailed it. Set your lineups. See you next week.